Hello everyone, so welcome back to my channel. This is the method on speaking. Today's video is again linguistic, just like yesterday's video. Then from tomorrow onward, we will go back to historical videos. Okay, today's videos, I wrote down just three points that I would like to cover. The first point being, how many languages can you actually learn at the same time? Now, uh, this is a very technical question, but I will answer it as quickly and precisely as possible. It really depends on your experience. Now, this, please remember that the things I'm telling you are coming from a man who has dedicated over 15 years to language learning, and at the moment I am able to speak fluently around seven languages, not all at the same level, but this is where, where I'm coming from. This is the sort of experience that the sort of uh, advice that I'm giving you comes from and it's based upon. And of course, I will fill the link in, uh, I will fill the description below with links to videos where you can actually see uh, that I speak these other languages rather fluently, not perfectly, but rather fluently, uh, so that you don't actually have to believe me, but you can see it yourselves. Okay, so um, it really depends on your level of experience, meaning that, simply put, if said language uh, you are starting to study is your second language, so if you only speak one language now, your native tongue, and you are for the first time starting to learn a second language, then I would say refrain from learning more than one language. Multiple language learning is not a good idea if this is your first experience with language learning, foreign language studies. So in other words, let's say you're an English speaker, you're Anglophone, a native, and you have never taken any other language and now you're like well I'd like to learn Spanish but Italian also sounds good and French or oh, but also Mandarin Chinese and never mind okay it's not gonna work the only thing you're gonna achieve because I see this quite a lot when I you know when I talk about my uh, experience with language learning a lot of people tell me oh yes at the moment I've been I've been studying uh, Portuguese Spanish French Russian Japanese Greek no you're not okay I mean yes you are taking time to memorize bits and bats from these many languages but you know in you have to imagine project yourself in for example a couple of years time in two years what will you have learned most of the times and i'm talking about over 90 percent of the times people students who start for the first time and they begin by multiple language training what they end up is when they end up with is that they know many they know a little bit about many different languages but that's that's nothing okay it achieves nothing it's good from a personal growth and cultural point of view but if you want to actually be able to reach fluency and being able to speak these languages with natives and understand what they are saying back or watch a film or a youtube video in these languages or translate or be an, be an interpreter then no you're not going to reach that goal if you try to uh, learn many languages at the same time if that's your first time experience um, on the other hand, focus on one language, your second language, and in two years' time you will have learned many things in one of one language. So, um, what about if you are, let's say you're Spanish, okay, and you already speak English well, you can follow this video with no problems, you understand everything I say, when they ask you, uh, for example, hey, can you please translate because I need to, you know, I need to tell this person that, and, and you can do it, you know, it's not a problem, you don't, you don't think, oh, no, 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 don't ask, don't ask me, don't know, because I'm afraid, I might not be able to understand, and I, if you have already reached that level with your English, then it, you can learn a, a third language, and if you want, you can also learn a third and a fourth at the same time. Now, how do you do it? So this is just to answer the first thing. My suggestion as a linguist, linguist is first learn a second language well. It doesn't, you don't have to be perfect in, with that language. I'm not perfect with my second language, which is English. Um, but um, you, know, you need to reach a point that you are confident with that language. If you reach that point, then you can start working on multiple language learning. Why? Because your experience with your second language will make the process of learning any language from that, so from third, fourth, fifth onward, a lot easier because your brain already knows and understands the process, you have experience with it and you have had success which will already um, dramatically reduce the possibility of you quitting because if you just start with five languages out of the blue 
and you start not having actual results that you were expecting or you find some languages to be particularly difficult because they have different uh, systems, writing systems for example, or the pronunciation such as, Man such as in Mandarin Chinese is particularly difficult and you might just give up and, and quit. But if you already have achieved a good level of success with your second language, you will most likely um, uh, not quit because you already know that you are able to uh, reach fluency in a foreign language. Okay, point number two. How do you remember things? Because it's, a, it's already quite difficult when you're focusing on one language alone to remember the things you study. Uh, you know, for example, you've looked up a word in English or whatever language you're learning, Italian, and you know, a couple of weeks later someone asks you, so how do you say this? And you're like, oh, I knew it. What was it? Okay, it happens a lot. The reason why it happens is because you didn't know it. The very moment that you actually know a word, you will remember it, okay? Occasionally it does happen that you don't remember a word, just, but it will come back. If it doesn't come back, it means you hadn't actually learned it, you hadn't memorized it. So a word is only learned when, when it's there and it's ready. Someone asks you how do you say this and you're like, like that, okay? I'll give you an example of this. Um, for example, in Italian, okay, we use, and I think it happens when, let me know if it works, if it happens in your languages as well, but there are a lot of English words that have entered our vocabulary. For example, we say stretching. There is a way to say that in Italian, and it's allungamento muscolare. No one says it. I think I've never said it in my entire life, if not for teaching this very principle. Everyone uses stretching. What that means is that stretching, which is a foreign word, which it has nothing to do with the Italian equivalent, is a word that all Italians understand. You can't forget that word. You can do that, you can achieve that with all words in any given language. It's just a matter of usage. So this is the key, and I've already mentioned this on a dedicated video, my secret for learning multiple languages. Um, but on this video I'd like to expand a little bit on this. Let me give you an actual task, a homework, which is the one I give to my both my students as a, lang a language teacher and my clients, private clients sometimes, who, um, for example people who are into business English etc. or exam preparation. What I do is this, choose some topics, for instance, furniture, Okay, can you name, let's say that you're learning Italian and Japanese, can you name all the things you have in the home, all the like table, coffee table, curtain, switch, uh, PowerPoint, socket, medicine cabinet, can you say all these things, um, laundry basket, uh, hair dryer, hair straightener, can you say all this covered in those languages? If you can't, write a list, write these things down. Another thing, clothing. You change your clothes every day. Can you say jumper? Can you say shirt? Can you say button? Can you say cuffs? Uh, cuffs, collar? Can you say, for example, I don't know, pullover, cardigan, jeans, trousers? Uh, can, can you say all these things? Scarf, coat, etc. Socks. If not, another page. It needs to be very nice and tidy. Write your clothing in the languages you're studying. Um, another topic, places in town. Can you say gym, school, roundabout, department store, um, for example, barber, can you say police station, can you say post office, bank, supermarket, uh, city hall, library. If you can't, places in town, write down all these things. Um, another one that you can choose as a topic, body parts. Can you say arm, hand, head, um, throat, chin, can you say all these things, elbow, forearm, having done this, Animals, can you name all the animals? Do you know deer? And apart from the obvious ones like dog and uh, um, cat, you know, the, the, anyone knows these. But if you're a language student, you should learn those things that are a little harder, like seal, like for example deer, or perhaps even a, um, a calf, a puppy or a kitten, eagle, hawk etc. Jobs and profession. Here is another one that you can start learning. Can you say dentist? Can you say secretary? Can you say broker? Can you say banker? A surgeon, doctor, driver, fishmonger, etc. I mean, you, I think you take the picture. Now, okay, but you already know that people, students study these things. Why am I saying this? Because people study it, but they don't do it the right way. Here is the technique. Once you've got all these things, when you wake up in a food, for example, is another one, very important cauliflower, broccoli, etc. Carrot, potatoes. Okay, you wake up in the morning, what do you do? Name the things you've got around you. Alarm clock, a night table or bedside table, blanket, bed sheet, pillows, wardrobe, in the languages that you're studying, okay? 
Um, then what do you do? You go to the bathroom. Well, while you start walking, you can say floor, wall and ceiling in these languages. Then you go to the bathroom, you can start naming all the things you see in the bathroom. Shower, shower curtain, shower rings, um, sh the rod, for example hand towel. Then you have your shower. And after the shower, what do you do? Perhaps you brush your teeth. There we go. Toothbrush, toothpaste. Before you do the action, say these things. You get out of the bath and the bathroom when you go to the kitchen. Well, you can start naming the rooms in the house. Okay. You can say kitchen, living room, bathroom, bedroom. As you enter the kitchen, you're going to have breakfast. Name you when the very moment you open the cupboards, and the fridge, name all the food you see. Sit down and while you have breakfast, you can say spoon, knife, fork, bowl, plate, dish, cup, mug, coffee, milk, sugar, salt and pepper. Okay, so what are you gonna do for the rest of your day? Well, wherever you go, name the places in town. And you can even practice grammar with this because you can say, uh, for example, you can say, I am going, in the language you're studying, I'm going to the post office. Then when you finish that, you can say, um, I went to the post office. And you can say, I'm, I will go or I am going to the gym. Uh, tonight I'm going to the gym. You come back home, you're going to have dinner. Here is your opportunity. Say breakfast, lunch and dinner in the language you are studying. And then again, the food will be different. Name what you are eating. Name what you are drinking. You can even use the actions. You can say, for example, if I have to say, uh, I am drinking water, and then I want to say it in Japanese, I'm going to say, Mizu non deiru. Mizu non deiru. I want to say it in Italian, Sto bevendo un po' d'acqua. Uh, you can say, and you will become super quick, because you will do this every day of your life. Your clothes will be different. Okay, you've memorized everything now. How can you use uh, the adjectives? You've got a huge problem because there are so many adjectives. Not a problem. Whenever you say jumper, you can say a tiny jumper, a small jumper, a beautiful jumper, a dark room, a bleak neighborhood. You can start practicing your uh, vocabulary for your a quaint house. You can even use a little uh, strange ones once you actually memorize a bright person. Now you do this for 30 days. Then you come back to this video and you comment down below and you let me know if you haven't learned hundreds and hundreds of words that you now remember perfectly. Why? Because they are part of your life. These languages are now becoming your daily routine. And as you notice, you never had to sit down and study. Never. I mean, you're just wasting a few seconds each time you do a everyday action. It leaves you plenty of time to have fun with your friends, to watch your Netflix, to study, to work, to do all you need to do, study meaning other subjects, for example, and still have the best you have ever had in your entire life. This is how the brain works. So if you don't use something every day, the brain is not going to allocate to utilize those energies which come from sugar, which come from food and carbohydrates and everything that you ingest um, to learn those techniques, those skills. Okay, It's not going to use it because you don't need it if you don't use it every day. It's just as simple as that. This is why when people move abroad, they learn languages quickly because they use them every day. It's just as simple as that. In fact, there are people I know who moved to England, stayed there 30 years and they still don't speak English because they, they were Italians and they just mingled with Italians. What a waste. It's not like you move to a country like England and you learn English just because Hogwarts is there and there is some magic infused wand somewhere that you found. No, you learn them because you're surrounded. If, you, if you're not, okay, it's not going to work. And with this technique, you're going to learn everything. You're going to practice grammar, verbs. You've got a problem with irregular verbs in English. Take, took, taken, get, got, got. Um, no problem. Use the verbs. It's, sim it's as simple as that. It takes a few minutes every from your daily routine. And you, if you are half as passionate as I am for languages, you will de it will be delightful for you. Because in just a matter of a week, if not a few days, you will start seeing amazing rewards. Only one obstacle, discipline. Are you disciplined enough to do this? Or do you forget? Do you just give up? Because if you do this, and I promise you as a language teacher, if you do this, 
do it for 30 days choose a language do it for 30 days for pronunciation you will have to you know listen to the natives make sure you get like word reference is an excellent site where you can hear uh, natives pronounce those words for you so you can you know even if you choose a bit less words but make sure you get them pronounced properly it doesn't have to be perfect pronunciation but at least it needs to be recognizable okay and you will see you will have amazing results point number three and then we are done um, which language should you choose a lot of people ask me this, like, what language should you choose? Uh, should I go for, um, you know, Chinese maybe, because that's a language that it seems like in the future, or maybe Korean, you know, consider all the development, or should I go for Spanish? A lot of people speak Spanish as a second language, but I kind of like Italian, but only Italians speak it. Okay, here is how it works. Yes, first, choose, okay, you need to learn English, that's, that's like automatic, the basis. If you don't know English, you need to know English, but considering you're watching a video in English, I think you're ready to speak English to a good level. So, um, how do you choose the next language? Yes, the economical situation, uh, yes, the job opportunities, career development, all of this is impressive and important. But the most important thing, the most important aspect, it needs to be a language and possibly a culture that you like. Because if you don't, you will quit. You need to have passion. Passion needs to move you. So sometimes I even suggest people, you know, it, if you already know English and you just want to learn another language, I would go for the language you like. It, even if it's not a language which is as useful in, in, in the future as far as you know, your career is concerned. Um, because it, if you don't like it, you won't make it part of your life. Um, unless you are doing it for a specific project, but still it needs to be something you like. Because if you hate the language, you hate the culture, you hate the people from that country, well, eventually you will have to move there and spend some time there if you really want to reach high levels and business level and, and, and you won't do it. Or if you do, you will hate every minute of it. So choose a language you like, a culture you like, maybe a country that you like, the history of that country, you like the people, you like the sound of that language. And uh, that is my uh, first suggestion to you. Okay, well this is for today's video, perhaps a little short, but um, on Saturdays I'm, I'm rather busy because I've just finished teaching uh, seven hours of lessons and so I, I, I couldn't really make a, a video which would take too long to edit. But this is for today's video, tomorrow we're going to be back with historical videos. Thank you very much for your time. I hope that my this information was useful, was useful for you. If you have any questions about language learning, please let me know in the comments below. I will see you tomorrow for my next daily upload. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.